the star of tonight's episode goes hopping mad. Welcome to Urban Legends. In the late 1960s in Fairfax County, Virginia, a selection of experienced prison guards were rounding up the last of the most dangerous inmates. They were to be transferred to a higher security prison, which had just been built. One of them in particular was going to be trouble. Douglas Griffin, a Virginia native, should have been put into a maximum security facility from the start. His extreme detachment from reality and excitement at any kind of violence only made him a hindrance to the system. Most of the guards, especially the newer ones, feared him and were pleased he was leaving. Their attitude was, out of sight, out of mind. Let him go and be someone else's problem. You got five seconds till we reach your cell Griffin. You better be ready. Surprisingly, the bus left on time and there were no reported problems with the convicts, the only thing was that they never arrived. A call went out, and after an hour or so, they found the vehicle. Two of the 11 prisoners hadn't tried to escape and stayed on board. The driver was found a few hundred meters away. Or what was left of it. As it turned to nighttime, one of the biggest manhunts in history began. Nine prisoners were to be located, and they had a big head start. The police caught three on the first night one the next day and two more in a barn the evening after. With every found inmate each and every officer felt a sense of pride and relief, but all of them were concerned, because Douglas Griffin was out there somewhere, and nobody was safe until he was brought in. The truth was, that the more time Douglas spent in nature and away from people, the more he evolved. On the evening of October 19, 1970, U.S. Air Force Cadet Robert Bennett was parked up with his girlfriend in Burke County. They'd just been to a football game and about to visit Bennett's uncle, when the front passenger window was violently smashed with a hatchet. The perpetrator screamed you're on private property, and I have your tag number. They drove straight to the police and described the man as wearing a white bunny costume, the hatchet was also on the car floor. It was collected as evidence and has been photographed by many ever since. Ten days later, a security guard named Paul Phillips approached a figure who was chopping down the porch post of an unfinished home with an axe. The figure, who was dressed as a white rabbit, shouted you're trespassing, if you come any closer I'll chop off your head. The police launched investigations into both cases, and many believed that it was Griffin. A media frenzy began with over 50 people contacted the police claiming to have seen the bunny man, and many complaints were made of partially eaten rabbits found in the area. One evening on a routine patrol, they saw him. The police cruiser chased the bunny man all the way to the Colchester overpass, where he climbed with astonishing ease. Hands on your head and kneel on the ground. The bunny man was hit by a train, killing him instantly. His body was thrown some distance away and was identified as Douglas J. Griffin. It seemed as if Griffin had been living around the overpass, as hunting equipment and food waste was also found there. And in time, the skeletal remains of the other two escapees from the bus were also discovered. It is said that if you venture to the Colchester overpass at midnight on Halloween, then he will meet you with his hatchet. The Bunny Man story is a popular urban legend with a large amount of variations. In some, he is more of a serial killer and mutilates countless bodies, in others, he is an eccentric hermit. There is some truth to the legend however. Robert Bennett and his fiancée really were attacked by a man dressed as a rabbit, they claimed, and due to the description, Paul Phillips was probably threatened by the same person. The police took the hatchet as evidence and did conduct a search. As for the Colchester overpass, it has always been associated with the story. In fact in 2011, the authorities had to put up a roadblock which caused a 14-hour tailback of people from all over, desperate to see the supposed bunny man hangout. 
The Legend has spawned three movies, many television episodes and also a game. If you're ever in Fairfax, Virginia, just be careful, for you never know if you'll see the bunny man. <laughs> that concludes tonight's story. I'll see you next time for more Urban Legends.